Today I'm going to show you how I maintain my equalizer um, distribution hitch. So right now I have it stored. It stores on the side of my trailer. I'll show you later in the video how I um, made this and did this setup here. This comes in really handy for when I go to a campground. I just take it off my truck, slide in here, lock it in place, and that way I don't leave it just on the ground or sitting in the back of my truck rolling around. And then I'm uh, fortunate with these equalizer hitch, uh, this equalizer hitch uh, to have square bars. So I store them here, one on each side. I made these, I'll show you how I made these later in the video, but it's just a sewer pipe, three inch. And I just pull these out and there's one on each side. So my wife's on one side, I'm on the other side. And I'm able to um, just store them in there when I'm at the campsite and at home. A lot of people just think that it's a sewer pipe and there's nothing inside. So when I maintain this, um, I painted these a few times, they say, to keep them painted and so they don't rust. Um, I've done it probably uh, every year touched up the paint for the last four years so the paint's been building up a little bit and the stickers have been wearing out so I contacted the company and they sent me new stickers so they sent me this one here and this one so I'll be removing these stickers sanding these down and painting them pulling this apart and lubricating it up so um, let's get this started So here's the stickers they sent me free of charge. They mailed them to me. So here's the paint that I'm going to be using uh, for repainting. And then I'm going to replace my ball uh, cover with this. I found that I like this one. It works very well. So I'll show you how this goes on and um, how it works after I clean everything up. So I have the bars off here. And you can see now it's just worn and rusted. So I'm going to sand all this down and uh, put a rust neutralizer on here and repaint them. And uh, the decals, replace them like I said. I'll, uh, in the description below, I'll put you the, uh, the name and phone number of the company you call for these stickers if you want them. And it's important to give them this information. Hopefully you can see this what model number it is, the tongue weight and trailer weight. They'll want that information. So they give you the proper sticker. So you can see the wear here. So I want to show you this before I started working on it, removing the stickers. I'll use a, some type of scraper to get these off and then I'll use sandpaper to clean these up. So now I'm going to remove this. I found it easy to remove this and I have this special tool here. It's a, called a hitch grip. I'll put a link to this in the description below. It's like a back saver. Hopefully I can do this. I got doing filming with one hand. Balances it and slide it out. I'll bring it over. Slide it in place and put my uh, pin in there. So this thing's uh, worth it. And I use that all the time. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, show you what I'm gonna do next. So part of the reason I put this hitch in the receiver here is to be able to work on this a little easier because what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take these bolts out and slide this sleeve out because I want to clean everything up get it all painted and then I want to lubricate here and underneath in the plate where it's, it's rubbing against so I replaced these uh, nuts here a while ago with uh, lock nuts so they wouldn't work loose because I found them loosening up every once in a while because they're tort torque to a certain specification and they kept loosening on me so I, I went this route. 
So I just use a 15 16 socket and I'll take them off and, and I'll get back to you here once I have them removed. So I got the stabilizer arm brackets removed here. So what I'll be doing, I'll be cleaning these up and then I'm going to check for wear on these bolts that go through them. Um, and and uh, so what I usually do is I'm going to say probably every four or six months I apply some uh, grease under here, under here. I use a, a marine grease. It's a uh, more built for uh, water boats axles stuff like that so um, it'll hold up better in wet weather and then I just usually try to work some in here but I try and take this apart maybe every eight months to a year we travel every couple weeks for three days and then we go on like a 30-day trip once a year 40-day trip um, so it gets used quite a bit so on the top I'm able to get grease here and it lubricates up nice. You can see the grease stays there, but the lower portion, you can see here, there's nothing, there's no real grease. So you almost have to take it apart to get it greased properly. So here's the bottom of this, where the top is still greased up. And this one, look at that one. So. And it's pretty important you take these off and lube them up. So I'm going to get go ahead and get everything cleaned up as much as I can with a paper towel. And then I'll use something to, to clean the um, parts off real well before I paint. So I wiped off a uh, majority of the grease that I could with a paper towel on these. And I have them soaking in a little container with uh, mineral spirits. So I'll, I'll let it soak for a little bit, wipe them down. I'll use the mineral spirits also to get this all cleaned up, get all the grease cleaned off the ball and everything. And, uh, and then I'll go from there. What I did was I cleaned these all with a thinner. And then I took it to my pressure washer and pressure washed them off. And now I'm going to do the bars. And you'll see uh, how my pressure washer works. It'll remove most of the label that's on there, hopefully. like it's not working very good to take the uh, labels off so I'll just um, do the best I can then I'll sand the rest off maybe get some thinner on it to loosen it up well I was able to get a lot of the uh, decal off with the pressure washer just picking at it so I did the whole bar you can see here cleaned it up pretty well wanted to get it cleaned up uh, a lot so I make sure the the paint sticks to it I haven't really pressure washed them like this before to do the uh, painting I just kind of just didn't coat the paint so this way it'll stick better I'm going to use a rust neutralizer on the bars on the bare metal so it'll help the metal not uh, rust as much So now I'm going to uh, sand these up. So I'm sanding this with a 120 sandpaper, my sander. And you can see it, I just started. So it'll work very well with this. I don't think I need to do a finer grit after this. Got the bars all sanded down, cleaned up. 
I'm going to coat them with this uh, prep and primer made by Jasco. I don't think they sell this anymore, but uh, if you needed something to kill rust or neutralize it, there's got to be things at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or your local hardware store you can use. So it's good for uh, preparation before you paint, and it's good on rusted or new metal. kind of neutralizes it and uh, seals off the metal so that rust can't penetrate it. So these um, here where the arms slide in, you can see now that's cleaned up the uh, little gouge marks in it. Here's the, the bottom side. That won't matter too much. I don't see any cracks in the steel. Unless that is one. So uh, you can see here that's just from uh, dirt and sand just getting in there and grinding away at it. So it's important to keep them greased. But even with the grease on it, it will uh, do this. So I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, Jasco stuff on here to neutralize it. And also do the hitch where I see rust. And then also on the, the arms that these rest on, um, I'll, I'll do that. Put this neutralizer on it so I can get it ready to paint. I'll show you what the... Uh, other part is I'm doing where the bar, bars rest on it. So let me go over there. So here's where the uh, bars rest on the, the arms here. You can see this, so I'll clean this up and neutralize it and uh, primer it and paint it all. So these sell these separate, Equalizer does, these pads. And I recommend if you don't have them to get them. They help. Uh, so you don't have to hear all that creaking and noises when the bars slide on this. Um, helps a lot. So, and then I'll get this all cleaned up and painted too. I've got these all primed up, so I'll let it soak in and set overnight, and then I'll wipe them all down and then paint them up. I mounted this ball upside down um, on the hitch just so you could see what it looks like. So you could see these wear marks here. See that? So this is like this. This wears here. This is a part where you have to take this off to get grease in there because you can't get it in there. And then uh, also same with this area here. You can grease this area right here with this on, with bolts in place, but um, that's about it. Your main spots are here and underneath, and then I put grease here probably every shoot, uh, fourth trip. I put a little bit here. I wipe it all down with a paper towel, then I put some grease. So then you always want to check to make sure this is tight. You don't want this coming loose and, and then your ball loosening and coming off and you will lose your whole load. So uh, just check that. Okay, so now I'm just going to put the primer, the, the neutralizer on here, the rust neutralizer. I'm just letting it dry overnight. So I think I'm going to just coat some of these other areas too. And uh, the rust areas here. So I can paint these tomorrow. If you're wondering what I used to apply that um, rust neutralizer on there, I just used a disposable foam brush. It's the next day. My uh, the stuff all dried up, killed all the rust, sealed up the metal. You can see it kind of uh, turned the metal gray color. It's protecting it. It's got a built-in primer in it. So now I'm going to get them cleaned up, wipe them down, and, uh, and get them painted. While inspecting these receivers for the um, equalizer bars, I noticed that here... You can't see it very well. 
it's kind of oblong. You can see it more on this one. So they're wearing slightly. When I put a bolt in there that's holding in place, there's quite a bit of play. You can see more over there. And then there's play on this one. So I contacted Equalizer and they sent, uh, sent some pictures of it and they'll look it over and their warranty department and see if it's under warranty to replace these. I'm thinking that maybe since it's sloppy a little bit, it allows these to move and it might cause the wear here on these here. So I'll let you know what uh, they say about it. So it's gonna take a little while for them to respond, but um, better to point it out to them now than later also see it. you can see it here I noticed that when I go here sorry about the shakiness here I noticed there's a little crack right here going through it so I'm gonna and then there's another one right on the other side here so hopefully um, they'll replace these for me. I've hung everything up for my tree here. So it'll be easier to paint and I won't have to keep turning it to paint. So I put it through the holes here. Put a little spacer in there to keep the string away from the part there. And then here I just did this. Taped off the ball and I'm hanging it there. So I'm going to go ahead and get these primered. I'm going to, I decided to primer them um, prior to painting them, even though this primer or this uh, sealer here acts as a primer too. So I got uh, some primer to paint on it. I'm going to put a couple coats of this on, then I'm going to do a couple coats of paint. They're all primed up, and so I'm going to just let them dry for another hour and then recoat them with uh, paint they're all painted up i got like three coats on them so i'm just gonna let them dry up for a couple days and then reassemble everything this is a good time to check under your receiver hitch also and just give it a look. I'm going to clean all that grease up and inspect to make sure there's no damage up in there. Make sure everything moves properly. And lubricate up in there if I have to. I've got it all cleaned up. I cleaned up with brake cleaners the best I could. I don't see any bad scratches in there or anything. I'm going to touch up some of this. I'm going to put some of that rust neutralizer on here and prime it and paint it, up, paint it up. So it looks good. And then when I put everything back together on my hitch, I'll lube up my ball and make sure I get lubricant inside there. These are all painted up and I have the decals on there. Um, and then I contacted uh, Progress Manufacturing, the equalizer company, and uh, sent them pictures of the oblong holes here and the cracks and they uh, sent it to their engineers and within a day and a half I had approval for them to send me a brand new one. So these are my old ones, but I got to put them on my trailer because I'm going camping in a couple days. So um, the new ones won't be here till later this next week. So I'm going to leave these decals off and save them for a later date. Um, so I thought, I was, while I was examining these bolts that go through here I saw they were just slightly worn not too bad you can see here here so these are grade 8 bolts they're a lot stronger than the grade fives that you see at a store so I got uh, two bolts two grade 8 washers and then I got different lock nuts here you can see this one here has a nylon in there so it 
it keeps it from backing out. This one, they crimp it slightly so that it's slightly tapered so it, it pinches down on the bolt so it won't, won't unbolt. So I like those bolts better than these nylon ones. After you take them off a few times, on and off, um, this nylon will break down. So uh, I like to go with these if I can. So I found these at a local metal hardware store. So I'm gonna replace the bolts while I'm at it. The bolts, the bolts and the washers and the nuts for two sets like this were uh, about $14. So they aren't cheap, but they're worth it. So I'm uh, in the process of um, painting the chains right now. And then uh, in the meantime, I might show you how I made my bracket for my, um, my hitch to go on and my bars, my uh, bars to go in um, for storage. So I'll show you those now. Here's the storage for my bars. I just have a, a three inch ABS cap that's for sewer wastewater with a, a female adapter here, a short piece for this to screw into. And I could slide my um, bar inside there. So I measured the distance of the bar and I made it so the bar came to right here, the edge here. So I can put the cap on. And then over here, I just have a strap. I looked for some strap metal they sold at the hardware store and just matched it up so it would fit. And then what I did, I bolted it to the frame right here, as you can see. So it's bolted to the frame and I used my um, lock nut there, see, so it won't come off. And then up here, I'm gonna go up over. So at this end here, that's the front of the trailer. Here's going towards the back. I have the same strap there with the lock nut. And I just took some channel iron that I had here. And I think it's a two inch channel iron by one inch here. I notched it around here, around this I-beam. And then I just went up and I bolted it right to the I-beam. And then I use this here to bolt my bolts right in with my nylon nuts. And I have a three inch cap on the end. So it's pretty easy to do. And I did it over on the other side over there too, as you can see. And then in one of my other videos, I'll, I'll put a, um, a link to it in the description below of how I put this uh, portable tank underneath here and how it folds down and pulls out easy for so I have it under here for storage so okay now I'm going to go around and show you how I did the hitch setup here's how the the hitch holder I put in works so when I'm camping or I'm at home and I just want to store my hitch. I just take it off my truck at the campsite or at home and move it over here. Slide in here, put my locking pin in here. And uh, this is, uh, I think it's a two by two square by roughly six inches long. I'll leave a link in the description below. Uh, where I got it and what it is. I think I got it at Home Depot. This here is inch and a quarter angle iron by quarter inch. I had it, so you could probably use any size angle iron over one inch. Then uh, underneath, what I did is I drilled a hole in the angle iron, drilled a hole in the frame, and I did a, tapped it to thread it into the frame got the bolt and then I have a washer lock washer and the bolt grade 8 bolts this angle iron here is welded right here on both sides so it's uh, 
it's pretty strong it's been working i've had it there for roughly three years and no problem so let's go underneath and take a look how i mounted it under there here we are underneath the trailer looking up that uh, hinge receiver here's how i connected it this here is the bracket from the battery setup I have before I did this other setup, compartment, battery compartment. So the bracket here, I just took here on top of this receiver and welded a piece of angle iron, drilled a hole in it, drilled a hole in here, put a bolt through here with a, and put a lock nut on. This angle iron's welded onto here and it holds it in place. I don't have to worry about this falling off or anything because um, it's held in place pretty well. Also the hitch, when I store here, all it does is sit here uh, when the trailer's parked. I never have a hitch sitting in it or mounted in it while I'm driving. There's no need for that. So I really like the setup and I'm glad I did this this project right here and the tubes for my equalizer arms here's a marine grease that i bought for five dollars and fifty cents for one pound at uh, o'reilly auto parts four years ago and this is how much um, i've used so far i thought for fun i'm going to try this one out it's specified as a hitch ball lubricant it's waterproof just like this one is from Mission Automotive. I bought it on Amazon for $10 for four ounces, which is ridiculous. Um, the reviews on it say it works real well, but uh, we'll see. I'm gonna check it out and see. So what I'll do is, um, after I've used this for a while, um, and I go to inspect everything next time, I'll put in the description below, I'll put an update that'll tell you if this is better or this. So before we start uh, putting everything together, the hitch back together, I wanna show you something here I had to do uh, a while ago. After towing the trailer for just over two years, I noticed in my uh, brand new hitch receiver that the holes here were getting a little bit oblong um, from the pin just moving slightly in there. So I got some um, of these set collars that are usually used for sh on shafts for bearings and stuff like that. And I just uh, welded them on play in place here. And uh, so it made it a lot tighter. So when I put the pin in, it's a lot tighter. So <clears throat> it actually helped quite a bit. So if you ever have that problem, you can just uh, weld on some set collars um, to make it tighter and correct that oblong hole problem. I've got everything cleaned up, inspected, and uh, painted and ready to go um, back in, on the truck. So uh, let's do this. I got um, this here. I inspected the ball. There's just a few pits in it, but nothing uh, affecting the integrity of the steel itself. Got my lubricants, my wrenches to put these new bolts on. These old uh, sockets that accept the bars that uh, will be replaced in a few days. And my new ball cover. I got my chains painted here. And... Uh, I just painted with a flat paint because uh, Rust-Oleum paint because that's all I had. I didn't have any more gloss left, so that'll work. So let's get this put back together. I've got the ball all greased up with that new lubricant I'm trying out. That lubricant actually feels pretty good. It feels slippery and slick. Um, even after I washed it off, my fingers feel slick. So we'll see how it holds up. Uh, I have high hopes for it. Um, I got my ball cover here that I put on here to protect it from getting dirt on it and um, while it's being stored and it keeps the grease on there also. I'll put a link 
in the description below of where you can get this ball cover. And it says, for those people that are saying uh, you don't need to grease your ball, it says greasing the ball helps prevent wear. So I agree with that because if you have metal on metal, it will wear. Now going underneath here, you'll see I got everything lubed up here and then I have these parts lubed up too. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide these in place. I've got these bolts torqued down to 60 pounds and uh, with the torque wrench here and with this type, you can hear it click. That means it's at 60 pounds and uh, the reason I know it's 60 pounds is because on this label, it says 60 pounds. And that's usually right on the side of the um, socket there. So I got it all lubed up. And then you might have noticed that I have the nut facing up rather than the nut being on the bottom. I like the nut to be on top so I can kind of see and uh, make sure it's not getting loose on me. I know I can tell by the tightness of this, but uh, it's always helpful to have it upward like that so you can keep an eye on it, see if it's working loose. And when you walk around your truck to do a quick inspection on it when you're hooked up and traveling, it's nice to see it that way. So on this uh, hitch on the trailer, I got it all cleaned up like I showed you earlier and I put that uh, lube in there also made sure everything moved real nice I took my locks here and over here and I spray this water resistant silicone in the uh, keys and in the mechanisms and that keeps them uh, functioning right um, you might have noticed this here it's a reflective tape you can buy I'll put a link in the description below of what it is and you could buy it pretty much any hardware store or online. I use it because I have a backup camera on my um, truck and when I'm backing up it's hard to see all this area and I'm able to line up my line that I see in my backup camera with this and it helps me because this is black and it's hard to see. So and then you can see this lock here I'll put a, a link in the description below of my video on this. Um, I know it's just a deterrent. Um, somebody can cut it or do whatever they want if they wanted to, but uh, it keeps uh, the good, good people honest. Everything's back together. Uh, I just wanted to point out a couple things, uh, some pointers for you. Before you head out on a trip, check to make sure these here are nice and tight. This one will loosen up over time. So it's good to check it very often. Um, and then there are some bolts back here that go across that um, you should check from time to time. But uh, mine actually, I haven't moved uh, since I got it really. When I did get this trailer, I had this hitch and uh, set up and had the guy install it at the dealership. And uh, he installed it all wrong. I got home from where I bought it. It's maybe 200 miles away. Came back home and this thing was all loose. He had it all adjusted wrong. Um, so it was kind of not a nice ride for me. So uh, I recommend that you find somebody that knows what they're doing to to uh, set it all up for you, or you go online and watch a lot of videos on how to do it. I had another uh, a friend that got the same setup. He's the one that actually sold me this one. And when he went to the dealership and they installed it, a different dealership than me, they put it in, but when they put this plate in, they went over some wires and they crimped it so it was smashing some wires, so he had to take it back. So it's a good thing, too, to check these bolts. Probably, you know, almost every trip, every other trip, it's worth it to do that. Uh, make sure they don't loosen up and keep all this stuff lubed up 
your locks and everything and you should have little to no problems. So thanks for watching everybody. I appreciate it. Um, and I hope you have a, a good day and happy camping. If you like this video, please hit the like button, the thumbs up, and uh, hopefully you're subscribed. If you aren't, feel free to subscribe if you like, and you'll see other videos pop up as, they, uh, as I do them. So I have several more to do, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to comment or ask questions if you like. I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Take care, everybody. Happy camping.